the recommended dosage, that's the table I, was, I talked to you about. Uh, we've, uh, Dr. Forte and, and myself, we've uh, combed the literature and really uh, wanted to present you with recommended dosages uh, that really make sense, that are uh, applicable in your practice. And we've looked at all the different uh, benefits, potential benefits uh, of omega-3s uh, within different uh, conditions. Uh, so we're looking at cardiovascular health, which obviously includes blood pressure and triglyceride lowering. So uh, a CRP as well, which is an indicator or biomarker for inflammation. But we're really looking also at total cholesterol. Um, whereas at, for this, and, and those are more therapeutic already. I jumped on the therapeutic side of things where I, I've skipped the prevention side of things where if you're for maintenance of good health, uh, that's what our daily omega-3 pro product is for. Right. So two soft gels a day of our daily will keep you on the good side. It'll help you achieve the omega three uh, index of eight uh, percent that we talked about. And so this really, really gives you a good uh, protection against uh, diseases or conditions in general, really helps you keep yourself he healthy uh, or stay healthy. And then on the therapeutic side, on cardiovascular, what we would recommend is two soft gels of the daily and three uh, of the MAG EPA. What you want to do here is to have uh, uh, always a good balance of EPA DHA, but uh, a boost in MAG EPA for cardio. Cognitive health, uh, that includes eye health, and that would be for neuroprotection, mood disorders, uh, ADHD, uh, but also AMD for uh, eye health and dry eye. Uh, for this, you want to maximize your levels of DHA while not forgetting EPA as well, because and, and, and anti-inflammation or, or res, uh, inflammation resolution is really important for all of those uh, conditions as well. But DHA is what you want to feed your brain with and your eyes with as much as possible. So that would be four to five uh, soft gels a day of our daily omega-3. Uh, and again, this is uh, therapeutic levels. Inflammation, you want to combat inflammation, joint health, skin health, uh, autoimmune uh, issues. And uh, then you want to have, again, a good boost of EPA. Here, it's uh, two to three MAG EPA, always in conjunction with our daily omega-3. For gut health, here we're talking about, uh, you know, mostly inflammation as well, leaky gut, inflammation, and we're inflammatory bowel disease, uh, microbiome, because our MAG EPA has been studied as a prebiotic, and uh, we do have prebiotic applications for our MAG EPA that have been demonstrated uh, throughout our different clinical studies and preclinical studies as well. And this is where we would recommend two, again, of the daily, always keeping a good level of DHA and EPA, but a boost in EPA as well, three to four. And then for cellular health, and that's life expectancy, expectancy apoptosis for cancer, where we have tremendous data, lots of preclinical and human clinical studies done on uh, cancer research with MAG EPA, namely. Um, but also tailoring to the autophagy process and uh, cellular protection uh, as well. So two of the daily again, and three to five for the MAG EPA, depending on your conditions at that point. If you need any guidance, further guidance on any of those uh, recommended dosages, please feel free to ask us. And we can share also uh, the data that we have that supports those um, recommended dosages. And the last one would be energy, exercising, mitochondria, really tailoring to my mitochondria, but also lactate threshold, where we have a, a, a pilot study that, that was conducted, uh, has been canceled because of COVID, but uh, we do have some data that shows that uh, our uh, MAGO3 really helps uh, to uh, keep the lactate uh, thresholds uh, as low as possible during uh, exercising. And here we would recommend to of our daily and two to three of our MAG EPA to again, give a, a boost on EPA. This is a table that can become really useful for you guys. But again, if you have any questions or need more information, don't hesitate and, and reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you guys navigate through all of those. And obviously this is recommended uh, from you know where we stand based on the science, based on the data that we have. But in your own practice, you might want to uh, you know play around with those dosages. Um, you know, just to give you an example, or maybe uh, a little benchmark. If you look at the Health Canada, uh, the limit, the the upper limit in terms of recommended omega three or levels of omega threes that you can recommend uh, is five grams 
five grams or 5,000 milligrams of EPA plus DHA. So what we've tried to do here is stay below that throughout our recommended dosages. And I think it's not a bad idea. Like Dr. Fortin said, you always have to keep an equilibrium between uh, inflammation and, and anti-inflammation, right? So you got to have a, a balance or an equilibrium. And what we've been able to demonstrate is that with those dosages uh, applied to different uh, conditions, you're able to keep a good balance between the pro-inflammatory uh, fatty acids that you have in your body versus the anti-inflammatory ones. So that would be the AA versus EPA ratio. Uh, which, which by the way, you can also get in terms of result. If you do that omega-3 index test, you'll also get the access to the AA to EPA ratio, which is a really important one to measure the balance or the equilibrium between the EPA, the uh, anti uh, pro-inflammatory, inflammatory, inflammatory, sorry, and anti-inflammatory fatty acids. What we did do is we provided uh, we provided references at the end of the presentation for you guys to gain access to all the publications. So really, we want to leave you with this uh, image and this message is, you know, we are used to working with old omega-3 products, what we call the old omega-3 generation, the previous generation of omega-3 products, basically. And what we're telling you is we need to break free from the past and really move on to the next generation of omega-3 supplements, which we believe MAGO-3 is, is really key to improving the efficacy uh, and efficiency of omega-3s, uh, omega-3 supplements as a whole. And this is what we're offering to you today. So uh, we really, really uh, thank you, Mike and Dr. Kylie. Really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, and just to give you a glimpse of the references that we've included in the presentation uh, that you can gain access to, uh, of course. Yeah, awesome. Excellent. The one question in particular that I wanted to bring to your attention in regards to these, the therapeutic dosing that you have laid out here, would that, would that be recommended for somebody who does do the omega-3 index testing? The question was, are these therapeutic dosing needed forever or until omega index hits above eight? What's really great with the omega-3 index, by the way, uh, and I'll answer your, uh, your question, and then Sam can, and Dr. Afotin can help me or, or correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I, before I do this, just want to, because you're you're bringing a good point, the omega-3 index, really, what, what I love about and what the, ter the, the therapists really love about the omega-3 index is that now it allows them to get into personalized um, um, therapy, which is really, really interesting because you can give someone two soft gels of our daily omega-3 a day, they'll hit 8%. Some might actually exceed 8%, some might not get to 8%. Uh, when we do the studies, obviously we're looking at the average uh, the average data, right? But uh, so what, what that allows you to do is monitor the omega the levels of omega-3 in their red blood cells so and it allows you to adjust the the dosage uh, along the way to answer your question is you need to keep supplementing yourself with omega-3 once you've hit the eight percent what it what it will tell you is that you have the right dosage and now you got to keep that dose and you've got to keep taking it uh for the rest of your life and hopefully you you stay on the preventative side where you don't have to start um, you know, taking more to start tailoring to uh, different conditions. Is this a good answer, uh, Dr. Fortin? Yes, yes, of, of course. You have to to start with two of our daily. That's uh, the, the formulation that we made. And for the for the therapeutic, for example, if you have a chronic disease, you will probably have to to stick to the uh, therapeutic level. For example. We have a clinical trial on a prostate cancer patient. So they are ill, they are a cancer. So we will recommend to take three grams a day for the rest of their life because there's a chronic disease. My mother uh, suffered inflammation. So she took about, I don't even remember how many of the doses. So she took it like candy. So probably about six to 10 soft gel a day. The last time we look at their uh, omega-3 index, she was uh, beyond 12. So she says, and she, 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 she loved it. So it's, it really depends on the, how you can manage this kind of soft gel. 
of course, for my mother, it's free. So she, she abused me, but it's all right. It's my mom. But for you, for example, if you have a chronic disease, I would say take, take the, the two, you know, daily soft gel. So we'll be at 1.75 grams a day. So all the clinical trial we perform with these doses, mm-hmm. with no, you know, problem digesting fat, you will probably very, very near the eight. And after this, depending on your condition or your background, you can add one uh, daily omega-3 more or EPA if you suffer inflammation. But at some point in your life, everybody suffer inflammation at one point or the other. So, yeah. so in my point of view, start with the two and after this, add an extra EPA when you have an episode of inflammation or for example, uh, after a training, so we, we, we got a, a wonderful clinical trial that we stopped uh, because of COVID. So we supplement athletes before the, the, their training. And they report that the, uh, the, t- the takeover time to recover was uh, way, way, way shorter with MAG EPA. And we are able to maintain the lactic acid level in their blood below the, their uh, saturation that we have them pain on the, uh, on, on the next day. So if you train a lot, take a lot of uh, more EPA. For example, if you have a problem with your eyes, for example, you know, dry eyes, take the uh, balance uh, EPA and DHA for maybe one or two uh, extra soft gel. So basically up to five grams a day, there is no uh, concern. If, if you are not able to take all and the one doses, you just split your doses over the day, take it with your meal. Me, I took it uh, before, uh, before going to bed. So it's uh, it's depend on everybody. So I would say prevention, but at some point go a little bit on therapeutics. Because when you usually healthcare practitioners would recommend, and I, I've 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 uh, illustrated the dose per kilogram, and I've used seventy kilogram for uh, uh, an average adult, and and usually the dose that uh, therapists would recommend is around forty five um, milligrams of EPA DHA per kilo for a regular omega three. What we're offering or what we're recommending is 25, 25 milligrams of EPA DHA per uh, kilogram. That's our recommended dose, which is um, almost half of of the the dose of a regular omega-3 fish oil. And and what Dr. Fortin uh, discussed in terms of the feedback that we've been uh, getting and he's been getting in his during his clinical trials are very similar uh, from the feedbacks that we've been getting from the therapist talking about the... um, inflammation, the pain endured during exercise, we have seen and getting the the feedback where people that exercise a lot, that train a lot, they've seen a a huge difference between before and after taking MAG EPA, for instance, uh, in the pain felt during training uh, or the recuperation time. So this is also something that we've heard and that we've been getting in terms of feedback from the practice uh, side of things. Another question uh, about a patient who is on chemo and is wanting to use or considering using either of these products, um, would this be, I think the question was if this would be an effective solution either during or post chemo. As a, this as a, is, that's, a, that's a tricky question because we do have clinical studies. We have uh, you know, studied the impact of MAGO3 on uh, different cancer cells as well, by the way. I mean, uh, on the preclinical side, we've looked at, Dr. Fortin actually looked at the impact of different omega-3s on different cancer cells. And we've seen that uh, EPA would be good for prostate cancer, for instance, DHA more for breast cancer, DPA for other types of... So depending on the cancer cells, you get different impacts from different omega-3s. But at the end of the day, we haven't... I don't think we've conducted enough clinical studies to be able to start recommending uh, particular dosage uh, for chemotherapy uh, or as an adjuvant to chiro therapy. Uh, however, based on the data that we have, we have seen that uh, you know it can only bring positive things, uh, and it can only have. I mean, it, it, in our studies, what we've seen is positive impacts of EPA or DHA being taken alongside to chemotherapy. Um, but you do have to consult your doctor, obviously, your medical doctor. Uh, you need to uh, you know run the your the supplementation what, whatever your your intent is uh you got to talk to your doctor to make sure that it's approved one of the things that the patients will hear is that taking fish oil uh can actually increase uh chances of bleeding 
And that is one of the things that had been uh, studied or observed with omega-3s back in the days, where it does a, a lot like what aspirin would do. It just is acts as a, as a blood thinner, uh, basically. And and with the years, uh, this has not been seen in most of the clinical studies that have been conducted in the years. And one of the things that uh, one of the good results that we've been getting uh, during the prostate cancer study is, is exactly that, is that all the patients were scheduled for a prostatectomy. Uh, all the, the patients were scheduled to have their prostate removed. Uh, and so MAG-EP was given to them uh, as a supplementation uh, before prostatectomy. And then what uh, during the operation, the uh, surgeons had not seen any differences between the placebo group and the MAG-EPA group in terms of uh, blood uh, ap- uh, episodes. So so those, they, this is one of the great studies that we have that hopefully helps doctors make that recommendation to recommend MAG-EPA during uh, chemotherapy. But you got to keep that, keep in mind, this was for prostate cancer st- uh, patients specifically. So does that apply to all cancer subjects? That remains to be seen. Dr. Tafa, thank you. Do you have any? Uh... Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. I think so. So we we run, you know, several cancer cell in the lab right here and the incubator right, uh, you know, here in the lab. And as you can say, if you ask your uh, doctor, your oncologist, I, I, I spoke with many oncologists. They always said that we don't know if we if we take omega three at the same time that your chemo, you know, regimen. If what will be the outcome? For sure, if you take it before your chemo, you will load up your cells with omega-3 that will decrease the barrier to induce apoptosis. So, and we saw it on the lab. So my recommendation, it's don't mix the, maybe the mag PA with when you are on your regimen, your chemo, but between those age and before, you know, uh, the uh, chemotherapy, I will say yes, because you will, it's, it's, it's like uh, eating fish. So you will load up your uh, mitochondrial membrane with EPA and the apoptosis uh, process that took place in the mitochondria. And so and so many, many cancer is just that we lack some kind of mesh, uh, protein in the mitochondria to induce apoptosis. So having a high omega-3 index will below this threshold to induce apoptosis. So if you have a cancer history in your in your family, please put your omega-3 index below height. It will help whatever this, uh, uh, a cell or a little bunch of cells, you know, uh, cancer in your, in your body, they will just induce the apoptosis. And for the prostate cancer patient, patient that we have, we saw uh, just after 10 weeks of uh, supplementation at the surgery, the uh, aggressiveness of the cancer, it's done great. So it's significantly downgrade the aggressiveness and the, uh, the 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 blood the blood vessel and the tumor. So probably one of the mechanism of action it's to it's to help. Let's say uh, ang- I don't know in English sorry about uh, it's angiogenize. So and, it's and they, yeah. So they, they 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 just stop the blood vessel to grow on the tumor. So yeah. the the tumor don't get oxygen to grow. Yeah. So I will say it's ask something. your oncologist first. If the oncologist say, yeah, there's no problem, took MAG EPA, go, go for go for it for MAG EPA. And if it's, you know, he said, no, I, I, I don't really want, just took it before, in between and after, of course. Yeah. Francois and Sam, can you speak briefly about rancidity? A couple of uh, questions have come in about concerns for rancidity issues. You know, if the product, you know, what's the, is it, how, how long is it stable, sustainable? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we, uh, as I've said, we got like I've got more than eighteen years now uh, of experience in the industry. I've, I've worked with so many official manufacturers in the world. I uh, visited. I've toured the world. Uh, literally, I uh, went to uh, Asia, obviously, because there's a lot of manufacturers there. But I uh, also went to South America, to the U.S., to Canada. We've got uh, one manufacturer here. And then I went to Europe. I visited most of the, the official manufacturers in Europe. And um, throughout the last, uh, you know, uh, 18 years, I've, 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 I've worked with most of them and formulated products with most of those fish oils. 
And and our policy back then, and it's still the, the same policy that we follow today and that we apply, is that we test every batch. Every batch is tested with, through and is enrolled in the IFOS program, which in, which basically forces us, you know, uh, to test every batch for everything. And that includes, uh, you know, dioxins, friends, uh, PCBs, heavy metals, and obviously peroxide and anisidine, which helps us uh, to determine the totox level, the total oxidation level of our fish oils. And with all of this experience, uh, with the years, we've turned ourselves uh, to probably two or three manufacturers, which we uh, really, really trust. And uh, the one that we work with uh, that has uh, basically that we've helped to um, implement our technology in is a Norwegian uh, fish oil manufacturer, which is probably one of the best uh, fish oil manufacturer out there. Uh, they're definitely amongst the top three. There's one in South America that we love. There's one in the U.S. as well that we love. And, and that one in Norway, we we absolutely love as well. Uh, and uh, batch after batch, they give us the best quality fish oil that we can ever hope for and then and and we still test every batch so that ensures that you know there's no slip ups uh cuz you need to know not all, every official manufacturer would test every batch for everything uh they usually do three or four or five different uh, tests per year but we test 100% of our fish oil batches and you can see all those results uh in the certificate analysis that I've talked about uh and alluded to previously by going on our website and punching in the lot number of the product that you that you purchased um so you do have access and pertaining to the oxidation more specifically every batch is very fresh and we encapsulate as soon as we uh we receive the oil and we do add our um, proprietary anti-oxidant uh, blend that we've developed throughout the years, which is a blend that we've demonstrated has increases the stability of the oil by 700% uh, versus not adding any antioxidant. But it's also a blend that is very, very well researched, not to prevent the efficacy of omega-3, which is something that Dr. Fortin has seen uh, by looking at the, most of the fish oil that are out there in the industry, uh, we've seen that um, most of them are combined with uh, D-alpha tocopherol, or some of them are combined with D-alpha tocopherol, uh, which basically prevents or um, yeah prevents the efficacy of omega three. Because one thing you need to understand is that omega three needs to be metabolized. Or some uh, some needs to be metabolized in order to be able to be um, to provide the this uh, inflammation resolution activity and in order to do this you kind of need to oxidize the oil uh in your body uh, and this is what leads to the formation of resolvents or spms like uh, uh protecting uh, protectin for instance uh and resolvents which are the anti-inflammatory molecules that helps reduce the inflammation in your body but in order to, to get to those molecules you need to oxidize the epa dh in your body so if you have too much dl photocopherol uh, it'll prevent the oxidation of EPA DHA. So that's why we've selected uh, the antioxidants, which won't uh, will be very, very uh, efficacious in vitro inside the soft gel to protect the oil against oxidation, but will not be so effective in your body uh, and won't prevent the oxidation of EPA DHA in your in your body to be able to produce those uh, metabolites that will in turn help reduce the inflammation. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, and the shelf life, uh, I just realized I partially answered the, the question. And the shelf life is three years. Most of the products you'll see on the market are two years. Uh, we put three years uh, because we've got the stability st studies to, to demonstrate that. Yeah, thanks for being so thorough, both of you. Um, one, one last question um, in regards to nursing and pregnancy. There is definitely an interest there as far as dosing as far as um you know effectiveness yeah well we've not we, we didn't put it on the uh on the, the the slide uh definitely something we we have to put our products have been really formulated they're all formulated in soft gel so definitely uh and the mag epa is a, is a small soft gel the daily is a, is is a larger one uh and that's the one that's uh that has the most dha the daily and the mag EPA, they weren't specifically formulated for pregnant women uh, or for um, for child or kids. 
as well, uh, or children. Um, so we do have uh, mag DHA oil that we have not, we haven't launched yet. We have access to it. We've produced it. Uh, we're producing it actually. We just haven't uh, yet formulated it for uh, and launched it under our EB Supplements brand. Um, so this is uh, we're we're coming out with products in different phases. We're now in phase two. We're looking at phase three, and and part of the phase three is to launch our Mag DHA product, uh, which we're going to formulate more probably the formulation that we have right now that we haven't launched yet is um, a smaller soft gel that is very compatible for uh, or more specifically formulated for pregnant women. Uh, uh, it also enterocoated so that it dissolves in the uh, the gut, not in the stomach, much like our daily omega-3 uh, is. It is enterocoated. So what you want basically is DHA, right? Uh, you want as much DHA as possible. So for now, the recommendation is to take your daily omega-3 probably in the similar dosage as uh, four to five saw gels a day, uh, the similar dosage as a cognitive health and eye health uh, therapeutic dose. Uh, and so that would be our current recommendation. So I guess my point is, um, you know, stay tuned. We are coming out with our Mag DHA product very soon. And we'll uh, obviously let you guys know as soon as it's available. And for kids who can't yet swallow capsules, is there any plans anything to come to fruition in the future and it, where it will be available in liquid or like a liquid dropper? Yeah, the part, uh, one particularity of the mag monoglyceride omega-3 fish oil is that uh, the monoglyceride is as a particular uh, taste. Uh, it's not about the quality of the oil. It's really about the fact that there are monoglycerides and it really pertains to the, uh, the rate of absorption. The fact that you can absorb it so quickly, if you take it as a liquid, you'll start absorbing it as soon as you take it. So you'll feel that absorption in your in your throat, your your tongue, and, and throughout your digestive system. So it gives you got it gives that tingling feeling or ex, uh, experience in your throat when you take it, which is something really uh, quite strange, quite odd, and it's something you're not expecting when you take fish oil or any oil for that matter. So um, in terms of feedback, when we've, and and we have tremendous experience in formulated liquid products, we formulated liquid products for most of the most popular brands out there uh, are some of our, my, my personal formulations, actually, it was one of my expertise. Um, and I've created a preparatory aromatic system that we that can be applied on uh, good quality fish oils, unique good quality fish oil, there's no way around that. Uh, and and it makes those uh, great liquid formulas that we've formulated in the years. And so we can definitely, we have the right expertise. It's just not necessarily uh, compatible with 100% uh, of our MAGO-3. So what we've been successful in formulating is a lower dose of MAGO-3. So you get you don't get the same monoglyceride omega-3 or uh, levels that we've used in clinical trials. You, we can, but we can still uh, include some MAGO3 in the liquid formulations. Uh, it's not 100%. So we've elected not to come out with liquid fish oils uh, with MAGO3 uh, fish oils in phase in the, the first few phases of our uh, product development uh, activities and EB supplements. But it is down the road something that we want to launch, and those would be more compatible for with childrens or kids, uh, where you can do it in liquids, but you can also do it in chewable soft gels which is something that we can do and we formulated uh, in the past as well. So again, another stay tuned, I guess, not something that we've wanted to come out with uh, at the moment, but something that we'll work on and, and try to come out with in the next couple uh, months. Now, this has been an excellent presentation. Thank you so much, both of you, and to say the least. Thank you so much, Mike. I really, really appreciate. Thank you so much, Dr. Kylie, as well, for the invitation. Uh, anything we can do, and it's, if you you have any questions, obviously, Dr. Fortin and I are. You can reach us through our website. You can call us. You can send us emails. But obviously, you can call Mike as well, and uh, you know he'll help you uh, get in touch with us. But uh, thank you so much for the opportunity again, Mike and, and Dr. Kylie. Really appreciate it. Kylie, no, is there anything that you wanted to uh, share? You think you want to add? You guys, I told you they were brilliant. Some of it's like so far over my head and I'm like, wait a second, you're taking me back to OChem and BioChem. I wanted to leave those things forever in my rear view mirror. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Thank you guys so much. We are going to start using them like crazy in our 2024 endeavors. Um, Mike, I'm pretty sure you're, we're using the MAG-03 EPA and DHEA, right? Or is it the yes. daily? Which one are we choosing? 
Yeah. We'll be continuously recommending both of those. Yeah. And we'll make that very clear as far as, um, I mean, both, both the daily monoglyceride as well as the MAG EPA. Absolutely. Nice. Perfect. All right. What I understand is if you have questions about the research, you go into and log into their your platform and you'll be able to find everything there. So go deep dive into their research. They're brilliant men, brilliant supplements. And like he said, he's been in the industry for 20 years creating this after what everything that he's learned and seen. If you have questions about what it can you and do in your practice, the best way to learn is to just start. Right, men? I cannot stress starting enough. Just start. I started a podcast having not ever listened to a podcast ever before in my life. June of 2020. I'm now starting another podcast and you're listening to it in 2024 if you're listening to this on replay. (laughs) Um, Because it's that powerful. Just start. That's all you have to do is just start. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. See everybody.